Hi there, welcome back to my channel. My name is Kristen and I make videos sharing about our personal financial journey to help you improve your finances and live a more intentional life. Today I'm back sharing 10 more things that I don't really spend money on. And that's not to say I never spend money on these things, just not a lot of money or on a regular basis. Now I made a video like this before, you can check that out. I will link it down below. You guys seem to like it, I thought it was fun to make. So I wanted to make a follow up to that video and that is what we're gonna talk about today. Before we get started, if there's anything in particular that you absolutely refuse to spend money on, I would love if you would leave me a comment and let me know. I find it fascinating to see what other people spend or don't spend their money on, so I would love to hear from you guys. The first thing I don't spend money on is any kind of warranties or extended warranties. Now this is something that we used to do because we never had any money to fix something if it broke. But now that we have paid off our debt and we have saved a couple months of expenses in an emergency fund, we do not put out any extra money for any warranties. What I did was just look at how often we paid for warranties and how often we actually ended up using them. And to be honest, more often than not, we would pay for the warranty and never use it. And once you have an emergency fund, that's what you can use that money for. If something breaks, like your car, or maybe some of the mechanical systems in your house, you have that money put to the side that you can use to pay for repairs if you have something break down. So we don't pay for the extra warranties and we keep that money in our bank instead. The next item we don't really pay for is kids pictures. Now let me explain. We do buy our kids pictures once every school year because of course we love to have the pictures of them and how they've grown over the years but our school actually does two sets of school pictures they didn't have that when i was a kid but now they have fall pictures and spring pictures so we just opt for the fall pictures it's nice because it's kind of a good memory of how they started the school year off so we just pay for the fall ones they still make the kids take the pictures for spring but we don't ever purchase them when it comes to sports pictures as well we've purchased so many sports picture packages over the years the thing is we only have so many places to put pictures in our house so what I do is I have the kids go put on their uniform take the pictures and then I usually will just purchase the team picture which is substantially cheaper if my kids want it if not I will just snap a couple of pictures myself of them in their uniforms on their way to games throughout the seasons and put them in our family yearbook instead and it probably saves us at least a hundred dollars if not more each year I hate paying for shipping. How annoying is it when you go and you wanna purchase an item and then at the last minute they tack on like a million dollar shipping charge. This is exactly why I pay for Prime and I know I've heard all of the arguments before on why Prime's a waste of money or Prime's not worth your money, but for me it's worth it. I absolutely love being able to order anything I want from Amazon whenever without having to pay shipping for it. Plus we have an Amazon distribution center pretty close to our home so we get the items super fast when we purchase it prime and on top of that I will always try to wait for a sale or look for a shipping code or figure out a way that I can get free shipping I don't know maybe it's just me but paying for shipping really irks me let me know in the comments if you guys have a prime membership just so that you can get free shipping we also use our prime membership for other things too uh, especially the prime TV let's be honest it's mostly for free shipping the next thing we don't spend a lot of money on is fancy vacations. Now, we have gone on some really nice vacations, but we are extremely, extremely fortunate that my parents usually plan the vacation, want their whole family to go with, and they pay for the lodging. So we have been able to stay in some really amazing homes and go on some very nice vacations over the past couple years thanks to the generosity of my parents and honestly if they weren't able to do that we wouldn't have gone on vacations most of those years at all because we were working hard to get out of debt and we just didn't have the money 
And even now that we are out of debt and we have saved an emergency fund, we've just learned how to travel and how to vacation really affordably because we've never had a lot of money to spend. Even when my parents are covering the lodging, we still have to pay transportation, all of our spending money, our food, etc. So it really does add up and we've come to enjoy the vacation itself and not necessarily need it to be super fancy just to have fun and make memories. The next thing we rarely spend money on is renting movies. That being said, every couple months we do grab a movie from, it's not it's not Redbox, it's like Redbox at our local grocery store. I think it costs us $1.50 for a day. I'm always careful to get it back within that 24 hours so it does not charge us another $1.50. But you'll never catch us renting movies on our cable because they cost like six, seven, eight bucks a pop or on our iPads where you can actually rent the movie straight from Apple. Again, they can cost a lot more money. I don't really need to spend that much to rent a movie. Plus we have Netflix, we have Hulu, we have, oh wait, I actually don't think we have Hulu anymore. We have Netflix, we have Prime. Plus so often our cable runs those like free HBO weekends or free stars weekends, whatever they're called. And they are showing a ton of movies for free. Right now in support of the Black Lives Matter movement, Comcast, which is our cable company, is showing a whole bunch of free documentaries, movies, other TV shows that we normally wouldn't get with our regular basic cable subscription. So I've been able to watch some of those for free. So we do not spend a lot of money to rent movies. And along the lines of renting movies, we don't spend money on snacks if we go to the movies. Now we don't go to the movies often, but my kids and my husband really like movies in the theater. Personally, I don't like them. I'd way rather be sitting at home in my sweats on my couch, watching a movie comfortably with my dogs, but they love them. So we do save up money sometimes and go out and have a family movie day at the movies. But I am that mom that takes most of our snacks with us. Again, my husband and my kids really enjoy movie popcorn, so sometimes they'll splurge and get a popcorn to split, but we will go to the dollar store. I will let them pick out whatever candy or whatever snacks they want, and I take it into the theater. Don't tattle on me. Their prices are just so ridiculous. I can literally go to the dollar store and get this same candy for a dollar that you can get at the movies for $4. Every once in a while, we do splurge, Every once in a while, we do let them get a treat or a slushy or something, but it's my preference to take our own food and snacks and not spend $150 to take four people to the movies. Okay, moms, if you do the same thing, tell me I'm not alone. <laughs> tell me in the comments that I'm not the only cheapskate that does this. The next thing I don't really spend money on is jewelry. If you notice, I don't have a fancy wedding ring. I wear a very thin gold band. I often get questions on the little necklaces I wear, but most of them are just cheap costume jewelry from Target. I am not a huge jewelry person. I, I don't wear it a lot. I don't like a lot of things on me. I wear my Apple watch all the time. But before I got this, I only ever wore a watch when I dressed up and went out somewhere. I'm super picky about what I wear. So I always tell people not to buy me jewelry <laughs> as gifts because then I feel badly if I don't wanna wear it, if it's not my style or if I don't like it, I don't want them to waste their money. All that being said, I do like some nice little staple pieces like this is, I don't think it's solid gold. I think it's like gold plated, but this is better quality. And when I find something that I really love that I feel is timeless and I won't get sick of or I won't change my taste on, then I'm happy to splurge on something, but I'm just not somebody who likes to wear a ton of fancy jewelry. It's just not my style. I'm, I've always been a lot more plain and understated. So you just won't find me spending money on expensive jewelry. 
The next thing is home repairs. My husband has done such a good job over the years of trying to research and learn things and figure out how to fix things around our home himself. Now, of course, there are some things, again, like bigger mechanical systems in our house that he tries not to mess with because he doesn't ever wanna make it worse. And those repairs can get super expensive. But for the most part, the smaller things around our house, even with our cars, he tries his best to fix them, repair them, do whatever he can do to save us the expensive bills of having repairmen come out. And just a quick tip, if you are someone that wants to learn more about your own home or fixing things around your home, YouTube is the best resource. Hop on there, watch a whole bunch of videos. I promise you, if you're having the issue, somebody else out there has also had the issue and probably made a video about it. The next item is Starbucks. I love Starbucks. My kids love Starbucks. My daughter loves the Frappuccinos. They're just milkshakes. My son loves the cake pops and the cookies. I love all of the things. But what I don't like is their prices. And I am not going to spend five, six dollars on a coffee. I'm just not gonna do it. I know some people say it doesn't matter if you spend money on coffee, you can still get wealthy. I'm not even about that argument. I know that if I was out spending five, ten dollars a week on coffees, it would 100% impact my budget. We live on a very small budget. We're a one income family. We cannot afford to spend money on that consistently, period. I do two things. I either make coffee myself at home. I always call them fancy coffees. I made this video before that shows you exactly how I do it. They are so yummy. Sometimes I even enjoy them better than Starbucks. And the second thing I do is I get gift cards. So I will scan all of our receipts, my husband's gas receipts, everything that we purchase that I'm able to scan into apps like Fetch Rewards or Ibotta. And then I will take all of the points that I accumulate and I will trade them in for Starbucks gift cards. I almost always have a Starbucks gift card in my app. That way if I'm out shopping or I'm out running errands and I really feel the need to get myself a Starbucks, I can do so without spending any money. So I will go ahead and link my referral codes for Ibotta and Fetch Rewards. If you love Starbucks too, but you don't wanna pay for it either, go ahead and sign up. You'll get a welcome bonus with each app and it's super simple. All you do is scan your receipts when you shop and you accumulate points and you accumulate cash back. Keeping with the coffee theme, I don't spend money on K-Cups anymore. Quite a while ago, I did a video about reusable household products that we had switched to. You can check that out when you're done watching this video. In that video, I talk about how we have switched completely to reusable K-Cups. Kind of a mix between a coffee filter and a K-Cup. It's shaped just like a K-Cup, but it opens up and you just put ground coffee in and brew it just as you would a normal K-cup. So I'm still able to use my Keurig, which I love. It's allowed me to cut back on my plastic consumption. I'm not getting rid of those single serve K-cups every single day when I make my coffee. And it has saved me so much money. Ground coffee is super cheap, guys. So that really takes my at-home coffees to a fraction of what I pay at Starbucks. Now those are all 10 things I don't like to spend money on, but I do have a bonus tip for you today. And that is I don't spend money on bank fees. I have money stashed in a whole bunch of different bank accounts so that if I do make a mistake with my bank account and something accidentally gets too low, I'm able to quickly and easily move money from another account to cover myself so I don't have to pay any fees. I never open account that is fee based. I only ever open free accounts. My favorites are Ally and Capital One. We've used Capital One forever. Their checking and their savings are completely free. I'll leave a link down below where you can sign up and get a $25 welcome bonus when you open an account. It is an online account, so I do all my banking over my laptop or my phone. It's super simple. And I also won't open an account that has required minimums because we don't keep a big buffer in our checking accounts. We like to take it pretty low and allocate our money to our other accounts where we have sinking funds set up or where we use our cashless. Let me try that again. Or where we use our cashless cash envelopes. And I'm just not willing to pay a bank to allow me 
to give them my money. So you're just not gonna see me paying any bank fees. So those are the 10, 11 things that I don't like to spend money on. I hope you found this helpful in some way. If you did, I would really appreciate if you could let me know by giving me a thumbs up and I hope you will take a minute and subscribe to my channel. I come out with new videos every Friday at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, and I would love to have you be part of my little family here on YouTube. If you've watched this video the whole way through, I thank you so much. I really appreciate you for spending some time with me today, and I hope you have a great day. Bye.